Hello out there, welcome to this tutorial on vectors. In this video, we'll be looking at component of vectors in two dimensions. First, we look at the representation of components of vectors in two dimensions. From the Cartesian plane below, we have the x-axis, the y-axis, where O is the origin. Um, we consider a unit vector i along x-axis and a unit vector j along y-axis. So we have said that where i and j are unit vectors along x and y-axis respectively. And the coordinates of i is 1, 0 and that of j is 0, 1. So we now consider a vector r. This vector r starts from the origin and uh, we look at the end point here, that is, if we take it as x and uh, take this one as y, the vector r is represented in component form as r equal to xi plus yj. So this is xi plus yj. This is the i component and this is the j component, where this x and y are scalars. For information, r can also be written as r equal to x, y in column form. The vector x, y is called a column vector. This is the representation of component of vectors in two dimensions, either in component form or as column vector. So that is all for representation of components of vectors in two dimensions. So we then go to magnitude of a vector in terms of its components. So the magnitude of a vector r equal to xi plus yj is also known as modulus of the vector and it's given as modulus of r equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. So from here, the modulus of r, which is also known as the magnitude of the vector, is the square root of the sum of the squares of the i component and the j components. So we now look at problems. Find the magnitude of each of the following vectors. We have a r1, R2 and R3. So in our solution, we start with R1. So R1 is equal to 4i plus 3j. So that the magnitude of R1 now is square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared. 4 squared is 16 plus 9, giving us 25. We have it as root 25. And root 25 is equal to 5. And that's all for magnitude of R1. For R2, we have R2 equals negative 2i plus 5j. And then the magnitude or the modulus of R2 is going to be square root of negative 2 squared plus 5 squared. And negative 2 squared is 4 plus 25 gives root 29. And that's all for the modulus or magnitude of R2. For R3, we have it as negative i minus 7j. So the modulus of R3 is going to give us square root of negative 1 squared plus negative 7 squared. We can equally call it the coefficient of i. So that is going to give us negative 1, which is squared. And here the coefficient of uh, j is negative 7, which is squared. And this is 49 plus 1, giving us root 50. And root 50 is simplified as 5 root 2. And that's all for the magnitude of a vector in terms of its component. We then go to the direction cosines of a vector in terms of its components. The direction cosines of a vector r equals xi plus yj are uh, given as cos alpha equals x over modulus of r 
and cos beta is equal to y over modulus of r. And if the vector is in three dimensions, remember it's going to be the third component over modulus of r. So we now look at problems. Find the direction cosines of each of the following vectors. We have vectors r1 and r2. So we start the solution from r1. Um, first and foremost, we need to find the magnitude of r1. So magnitude of r1 is going to be square root of negative 3 squared plus 1 squared. Since the coefficients of i and j are negative 3 and 1 respectively, we have chosen to call them the coefficient of i and j. So we are going to have this is 9 plus 1. That's going to give us root 10. So we have root 10. We now go ahead to find the direction cosines so that cos alpha now, which is the x, our x here is negative 3. We have it as negative 3 over the modulus of r1, which is root 10. And uh, you have the option of rationalizing, and you have the option of leaving it like this. So, and the cosine of b is y, and our y here is 1 over modulus of r1, which is root 10. And that's all for direction cosines of r1. We then go for the direction cosines of r2. So we still find the modulus of r2. That's going to give us square root of 2 squared plus 6 squared. 36 plus 4 gives 40. That's going to give us root 40. And root 40 can be simplified as 2 root 10. We go ahead to find the direction cosines of r2. So starting with the cosine of alpha, our x here is 2, that's the coefficient of i, that's 2 over 2 root 10. And uh, we have the coefficient of j to be 6, which is y, that's cos beta, is going to give us 6 over 2 root 10. And this can be simplified, 2 goes here will give us 1, this one is going to give us 1 over root 10. And here, this one can be simplified to here, 1, 2, here, 3. We have it as 3 over root 10. And that's all for direction cosines of a vector in terms of its components. Then we go for the unit vector in the direction of a given vector. Given the vector r equals xi plus yj, the unit vector in the direction of r is given as r cap, which is equal to r over modulus of r or magnitude of uh, r. And uh, for your information, the unit vector has a magnitude of 1. All unit vectors have magnitude of 1. So we start with problems. Find the unit vector in the direction of each of the following vectors. We have vectors r1, r2, and r3. So we start the solution from r1. For r1, first we need to find the modulus of r1. Finding the modulus of r1, we have it as square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. 3 squared is 9 plus 16 gives 25. We have it as square root of 25 and that gives 5. Now the unit vector in the direction of r1 which is given as r1 cap is equal to r and our r is 3i plus 4j over the modulus which is 5 and that's all for the unit vector in the direction of r1. Then we go for r2 so we find the magnitude of r2, which is going to give us square root of negative 1 squared plus 1 squared. And that's going to give us root 2 as the magnitude of r2. 
So the unit vector in the direction of R2 now is going to give us R2 cap equals R2, which is negative I plus J over root 2. And that's the unit vector in the direction of R2. We can also see it as unit vector parallel to R2. For your information, we are going to come up with a result later. So we go for R3. We also find the magnitude of R3. That's going to give us square root of negative 5 squared plus negative 2 squared. Negative 5 squared is 25 and negative 2 squared is 4. That's giving us a 29. And the magnitude of R3 is root 29. So that the unit vector in the direction of R3, which is going to give us R3 cap, is equal to the vector R3, which is negative 5i minus 2j over the modulus of R3, which is root 29. And that's all for the unit vector in the direction of a given vector. We then go to addition, subtraction, and multiplication of vectors by scalar. So here we'll be looking at addition of vectors, subtraction of vectors, and multiplication of vectors by scalar. Addition, subtraction, and multiplication of vectors by scalar are done component wise. Given the vectors p equals xi plus yj and q equals ai plus bj. p plus q is equal to x plus ai. That is, this xi plus ai is going to give us x plus ai then plus y plus bj, that is y here plus b, they are done component-wise, just like collecting the like terms in algebra. It's okay? So if you know how to simplify algebraic expressions by addition, multiplication, or expansion of brackets, your problem is half solved here. So, and that's all for addition of P and Q. Then also the subtraction P minus Q is going to be XI minus AI. That's going to give us X minus AI. Then plus YJ minus BJ. That's going to give us Y minus BJ. And that's all for subtraction. Then alpha P alpha p where this alpha is a scalar multiplying it by p we multiply alpha by the component so that we now have it as alpha xi if you multiply this xi by alpha we have alpha xi plus alpha yj multiplying alpha by yj you have alpha yj where alpha is a scalar, we have stated it earlier. Um, we look at important results. Vectors P and Q are said to be parallel to each other if P is alpha Q, where alpha is a scalar. Um, we stated earlier that the unit vector in the direction of a given vector are parallel to each other. This is exact demonstration of what we are saying. Remember, it is R over the modulus of magnitude of R. So if you find the magnitude of that value, you are going to have it to be 1. That is the property of a unit vector. And it is parallel to the original vector. So now we look at some problems. Given that vectors a equal to 3i minus 2j and b equals negative i plus 7j. Find 1a plus b, 2a minus b, 3, 5a minus 3b. 
So we start the solution from A. A plus B. We bring vector A, which is 3i minus 2j, plus vector B, which is negative i plus 7j. We said we are going to add them component-wise. So that's going to give us 3 plus negative 1. That's going to give us a 3 plus negative 1, then i plus negative 2 plus 7, then j. So 3 plus negative 1 is 3 minus 1, which gives 2i. Then plus negative 2 plus 7 gives 5. And that's going to give us plus 5j. That is the result of adding vectors a and b. Then for the second problem, which is minus a minus b, uh, we are going to have it again as vector a minus vector b. So collecting the like terms, better put, we are going to have 3 minus negative 1i. For your information, this is 3 minus negative 1. We said, let us look at it as coefficient of i. And the coefficient of i here is negative 1. We have it here. Then plus uh, negative 2 minus 7. This is negative 2 minus 7, then j. Simplifying this, 3 minus negative 1 is going to be plus. That's going to give us 3 plus 1. That's going to give us a 4i. Then negative 2 minus 7 gives negative 9. So times this positive will give us negative 9j. And that's the result of subtracting b from a. The third problem. So for the third problem, we have 5a minus 3b, and that's going to give us 5 times a. So we have 5 into a, which is 3i minus 2j, then minus 3 into b, which is negative i plus 7j. Expanding this bracket, we stated earlier, it is going to be 5 times 3i, that gives 15i. 5 times negative 2j gives negative 10j. Minus 3 times negative i gives plus 3i. And minus 3 times positive 7j gives minus 21j. Collecting the like terms and simplifying, 15i plus 3i gives 18i. And negative 10j minus 21j gives negative 31j and that's the result of 5a minus 3b and that's all for addition subtraction and multiplication of vectors by scalar we then go to position vectors from the cartesian plane below we have our x-axis and y-axis this is still remaining as the origin so if we have a vector, call it OA, and uh, another vector OB. When I say the vectors OA and OB are called position vectors relative to the origin O. And uh, from here, we can just name this as A, so that OA is equal to A. And the name OB as what? B. We can get another vector from A to B. We call it a AB. Following the triangular law of vectors addition, you see, it is ideal that since this one is going this way, it should be from A to O, then from O to B. So that we have it from A to O, then from O to B. So that we now have it as this is going to give us OA plus OB by vector addition. And the implication is since this O and this O, they are very close to each other, the result is going to be AB, which is this. But we know that since this OA is A, it means A is going to give us a negative 
A and our OB will still remain as B so that AB, if we rearrange it, it gives B minus A. Which means if you are to find AB, it is going to be the position vector of B minus that of A will give us the required vector in the appropriate direction. So from here, we will now be solving some problems. The position vectors of the points P, Q and R relative to the origin O are given as OP equal to 3, OQ negative 1, 5 and OR 4, negative 7. Find PQ, QR and modulus of magnitude of P, R. The position vectors of P, Q and R are given as column vectors. So we go straight to find solution to the problem starting from A, P, Q. We have established that to get the vector P, Q, it is the position vectors of Q minus that of P. And the position vector of Q is negative 1, 5. So I have negative 1, 5 minus the position vector of P, which is 3, 2. So we then simplify. Um, negative 1 minus 3 gives negative 4. And 5 minus 2 gives 3. And that's all for PQ. That's the vector PQ as column vector. So we go to B. For B, we have QR. Again, it is the position vector of R minus the position vector of Q. So we have the position vector of R to be 4, negative 7, minus that of Q is negative 1, 5. So that we now have 4 minus negative 1. That's going to give us 4 plus 1. That will give us 5. And negative 7 minus 5 will give us negative 12. And that's all for QR as column vector. Then we go for the C. And for C, we are going to find the vector PR first before we find the magnitude. So we said it is position vector of R minus that of P. And the position vector of R is 4, negative 7, then minus that of P is 3, 2. So in our solution now, we said 4 minus 3, and that will give us a 1. And minus 7 minus 2 gives negative 9. And that's all for the vector PR. So to find the modulus or the magnitude of PR, we are still going to have it as square root of, this is the x component, which is 1 squared plus negative 9 squared. Negative 9 squared is 81 plus 1 gives 82. So we have it as root 82. And that's all for the problems on position vectors. And this is the highest we can take on position vectors. Now we go to scalar product of two vectors. The scalar or dot product of two vectors P and Q is written P dot Q and defined as P dot Q equal to the magnitude of P times the magnitude of Q cos theta, where theta is the angle between P and Q. So given that P is x1i plus y1j and Q is x2i plus y2j, then p dot q is e going to be equal to x1 times x2 that's x1 x2 plus y1 y2 this is the principle of carrying out the scalar product of two vectors so we multiply out the corresponding components and add them up so we also have a result here. The important result is vector P and Q are said to be perpendicular to each other if P dot Q is equal to 
zero. That is, if their dot product is zero, then the two vectors are said to be perpendicular to each other. So we then go ahead to solve some problems. Given that vector R1 is equal to 2i plus 4j, R2 is equal to negative i plus j, and R3 is equal to negative 5i minus 2j, find a R1 dot R2, b R2 dot R3, and c R1 dot R3. So we start the solution from a. R1 dot R2 is going to give us our R1, which is 3i plus 4j dot R2 is going to give us negative i plus j. So we said we multiply out the corresponding component, that is the coefficient. So said, so we now have it as 3 times negative 1, then plus 4 times 1. So the coefficient of 3i here is 3 and that of i here is negative 1. Then the coefficient of j here is 4 and that of i here is 1. So 3 times negative 1 gives negative 3 then plus 4. And negative 3 plus 4 gives 1. So that is the dot product of R1 and R2. Now for B, we have R2 dot R3. So our R2 is negative I plus J. So we have it as negative I plus J dot I3, negative 5I minus 2J. So multiplying component wise, we're going to have negative 1 times negative 5, then plus 1 times negative 2. Remember the coefficient of i here is negative 1. The, the coefficient of i here is negative 5. The coefficient of j here is positive 1. And the coefficient of j is negative 2. So we simplify. Negative 1 times negative 5 gives 5 plus negative 2. And uh, 5 plus negative 2 gives 3. So we have the dot product of R2 and R3 to be 3. Then we go to C. For C, we have R1 dot R3. And our R1 is 3i plus 4j dot R3 is negative 5i minus 2j. Multiplying out component wise, we're going to have 3 times negative 5, then plus 4 times negative 2. So 3 times negative 5 gives negative 15. Then 4 times negative 2 gives negative 8. So we have it as plus negative 8. Negative 15 plus negative 8 gives negative 23. And that's all for the solution of problems on the scalar product of two vectors. This highest we can take here. We then go to angles between two vectors. From the definition of scalar or dot product of P and Q, the angle theta between P and Q is given as cos theta equals P dot Q over modulus of magnitude of P times magnitude of Q. And then um, from here, we solve some problems. Calculate the angle between the following pairs of vectors. A, we have uh, A and B. B, we have Q and R. Starting the solution from A, we need to find first the dot product of A and B. So that a dot b is that is 5i plus 3j dot negative 2i plus 4j. Now we multiply component wise, that's going to give us 5 times negative 2, then plus 3 times 4. So 5 times negative 2 gives negative 
10 plus 12 since 3 times 4 is 12 so that negative 10 plus 12 gives 2 then we go ahead to find the magnitude of a as well as that of b so the magnitude of a is going to be square root of 5 squared plus 3 squared 5 squared is 25 3 squared is 9 so 25 plus 9 gives 34 so we now have it as square root of 34 then we find the magnitude of b also that's going to be square root of negative 2 squared plus 4 squared 16 plus 4 20 that will give us root 20 so we can then go ahead to find the angle between a and b we let theta be the angle between a and b so that cos theta will be their dot product which is 2 over that's going to be over the magnitude of a which is root 34 times magnitude of b which is root 20. so from our calculator we have a uh, theta to be cos inverse of 0 0.0767 Six, seven. After simplifying this from your calculator, you have 0 0.0767 and the cos inverse is 85.6 degrees. So that's all for A. Then we go for B. For B, we are going to find the dot product of Q and R. So Q dot R is going to give us our Q is negative 4i minus j dot 2i minus 3j. So multiplying component wise and add, we have negative 4 times 2 plus negative 1 times negative 3. Negative 4 times 2 gives negative 8. And then negative 1 times negative 3 gives 3. So we have it as plus 3. Negative 8 plus 3 gives negative 5. Then we have to find the magnitude of Q. That's modulus of Q, which is going to be square root of negative 4 squared plus negative 1 squared. This is 16 plus 1, 17. We have it as root 17. Then the magnitude of R, that's going to give us square root of 2 squared plus negative 3 squared. This is 9 plus 4. That's going to give us root 13. Then we again say let theta be the angle between Q and R so that cos theta will be negative 5 since the dot product of Q and R is negative 5. Then over magnitude of Q which is root 17 times magnitude of r which is root 13 so that theta now will be equal to cos inverse of negative 0 0.3363 if you simplify this negative 5 over root 17 times root 13 so from our calculator theta is 109.7 degrees to one decimal place and that's all for the solution of b and that is the highest we can take on the angles between two vectors. We now go to projection of a vector on another vector. So consider the diagram below. We have a vector OA and vector OB. And OA is A, OB is B. If we draw a line from B, to OA at P, where PB is perpendicular to OA. So we state that the vectors OA is equal to A and OB is equal to B are position vectors relative to point O. This PB is perpendicular to OA. We stated that earlier and it is indicated the length OP. OP is projection of vector B on vector A. Projection of vector B on vector A. And in summary, 
we might not be able to go through all the verification and the, the rest we now say op is b dot a over modulus of a remember a over modulus of a is a unit vector in the direction of a we then multiply it by the vector b to give us the projection of vector b on vector a remember the way it, it is now projection of vector b on a so most of our calculation will be basically on a especially for the modulus so we now go ahead to solve some problems on projection of a vector on another vector find the projection of the vector r1 equals 6i minus 5j on the vector r2 equals 3i plus 2j um, first and foremost we say let the projection of r1 on r2 be p so we know that p is r1 dot r2 that is the dot product over the magnitude of r2 remember it is projection of r1 on r2 so our modulus is going to be calculated from r2 so we go ahead starting from the dot product of r1 and r2 so that's going to give us 6i minus 5j dot 3i plus 2j multiplying component wise 6 times 3 then plus negative 5 times 2 so that's 18 minus 10 6 times 3 is 18 negative 5 times 2 gives negative 10 so that's going to give us 18 minus 10 which gives 8 we then go ahead to find the magnitude of r2 so the modulus of r2 is going to be square root of 3 squared so you see that's 3 squared plus 2 squared 3 squared is 9 2 squared is 4 that's going to give us as root 13 so we then go ahead to substitute to get the projection of r1 on r2 since we've taken it as p so the dot product of r1 and r2 is 8 that's going to give us a 8 over modulus of r2 which is root 13 so we have it as 8 over root 13 rationalizing this we multiply both numerator and denominator by root 13 so we now have 8 root 13 over 13 and that gives the projection of r1 on r2 and that's all for projection of a vector on another vector and this is the highest we can take in this tutorial i hope you enjoyed this video please like and share this video and remember to subscribe to our youtube channel so our next video is going to be on components of vectors in three dimensions and there we are just going to add the third component and every other thing will go until then goodbye